Come on. Today is a special day. Today, for more than 2,000 years ago, God didn't just visit us. He made a dwelling among us and in us. Till today. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you for your presence in this place with me right now and with everyone who is watching. We honor your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being our friend, our counselor, our teacher, our comforter, our intercessor, and so much more. Can you teach us to be more and more aware of you, Holy Spirit? In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you make Jesus real to us? Can you turn our hearts and minds and eyes to our Father's heart? Come on. On that day, on the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit came in form of tongues of fire and rested on the disciples. And bam! Revival took place. Wonders, miracles, and signs that was just the result of our Father's presence, of His manifested presence. All aspect of His presence was made available and accessible till today. And I believe the disciple, disciples experienced just a glimpse of what is available. And more is available for us today. And we, he wants us to give that more. And it starts with an invitation. It starts with what Jesus did on the cross for me and you. By his suffering, death and resurrection, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are inviting us to adopt us, to become sons and daughters. There is a golden invitation for adoption for you and me to become sons and daughters. That's a free gift which you can respond with a yes in your heart. And something amazing happens if you do that. You know what happens? So there's a divine family, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father. And as we say yes to Jesus, Holy Spirit positions us in Jesus. That's you. That's you and me. Can you say that? That's me. That is me. That's you and me. And when we accept Jesus into our life, we are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit leads us to heavenly places. Right now, we are seated in heavenly places in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And we can have communion. We can come in union with our Father. We can have communion with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, isn't that amazing? And it just starts with the yes. How are you responding to this invitation? You find only fulfillment in him. Maybe you think, I'm not worthy of this. Maybe you are addicted. You are a mess up. You messed up. You backslid it, backslided. And you turned your back from, the, from our father. God loves you. Our pastor Ramesh used to say or says it all the time. He says, our father loves us, accepts us the way we are. But because he loves us so much, he doesn't leave us that way. He builds us up. He catapults us to our purpose and destiny. He sets us free. He delivers us. He brings alignment to our heart. He aligns our hearts to his heart. And we can encounter his transforming presence. 
and you can come as you are. Would you come as you are? What is your response? God gave us um, heavenly blueprints, heavenly um, orders and principles as blueprints, which we are called to mirror, to, to speak into, or to position us to. Because there is power, there is like a, a divine flow in alignment. When we mirror this, that what is aligned in heaven here on earth, there's a divine flow. For example, what do I mean by that? In Acts 2.1, there it says, when the day of Pentecost had come. Let me read it to you. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. With one accord together in one place. Right here, this is a heavenly picture of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together in one accord, in one place. And when we come in alignment, we can experience more and more from heaven, the flow, the fullness of the kingdom of God. So I'm not saying, you know, the disciples were all the same. They had their issues, like you and I. They had their troubles in life, whatever they went through. But with one heartbeat, For our Father, with one hunger for Him, with one desire, with one accord, they came together in one place. Right now, why are you here? We are together in one place, even when we are in different houses, through, social, through the screens. Spiritually, we are coming together in one accord. And our Father wants to align our hearts, wants, to, wants us to um, forgive, like aligning our hearts with Him. When that happens, our hearts automatically is challenged to forgive our brothers and sisters, to let go of bitterness, allow the Holy Spirit to work on your heart. Um, I would like to share my testimony of how I encountered God. Growing up as a child, I was uh, very, I grew up in the church. So I was one of the oldest in the church and um, everyone loved me. I was very good in school. I loved the Bible and they saw that. I used to climb the tree and uh, read the Bibles, Bible for hours. And um, when I was 16, started when I was 16, guest speaker would come and would always prophesy over me. Whenever someone comes, they prophesy over me. Some stuff is what I'm doing right now in these days. And they would prophesy and say this and that. And that would build up my pride. And other people would just lift me up and... Everyone would, would say to their children, hey, look at Cain. Learn like Cain. Do this like Cain. He's a good guy. But then, I, because of some stuff that happened, I started to backslide. I went into different things. It ended up, people who said, become like Cain, told their children, don't hang around Cain. If I see you with Cain, that's it. Some of them said, you belong into a jail. Because of the things I did, I lied. I had a double life. Some of the leaders of the church knew it. Uh, and the believers, they knew about it. And they couldn't trust me anymore. And I understand that. But I felt so unloved. 
I felt no one loves me and I, I wanted to quit some stuff that um, I had. I wanted to get rid of. I couldn't. So I thought, man, this life is not worth it. I couldn't see any future for me. So I wanted to end my life so many times. It didn't work out. So, but an encounter with God changed my life. And that's another story for another day. Then I got married, um, had children, and we settled down. I got my job back. We had a good life, my wife and my kids and I. But then in 2013, I went to a conference. And at that conference, it was in August 12th, on, the, on August 12th, 2013, guest speaker came, a prophet. And um, normally what he would do is, it was like a four-day conference. Normally what he does is he preaches and then prays for the people. But that day, I, I think it was the second day, he um, preached and then led the congregation into worship and pointed at me and said, come with me. And we went out, we went for a walk and he started to say, uh, Kyan, God is calling you out of this country. And I thought for myself, God, if you want me to move anywhere, you tell me. And I was just thinking that. And that prophet beside me, he's, he said, oh, you want to have a confirmation, so come with me. And he took me to his hotel, told me to sit down. And by that time, I didn't know what importation is. But anyway, he told me, stretch out your arm. And I stretched both of my arms like this. He showed me how to stretch my arm. And then he prayed a simple prayer. He said, I give you all what God gave me. Abba, give him everything in the name of Jesus. In that moment, I felt a fire in my arms going through my arm into my heart. And I heard a voice saying, go. A loving I will never forget that experience, voice saying go. And that night I knew that we are going to move to Canada. I um, went out, rushed to my wife, told her that. And um, my wife, uh, she's amazing. She's like, if God tells us, let's go, let's do this. And then I went out, I climbed the tree and just spent time with him. And the next day, we had that meeting again. He calls me to the front, prays for me, and I'm knocked out. I was able to feel the heaviness of his presence. When I was younger, I used to fake fall, you know, because I saw other people falling. I'm like, okay, let me do that as well. But after coming back from backsliding, coming back, I thought, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. But I wanted to experience that at least once. And that day I experienced that, that heaviness of our father of that presence of our father. And it was an amazing time. I was there for hours and my, it's changed my life forever. And why I'm sharing this is, is I want to pray for you. Doesn't matter where you are in life right now. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope. There's an invitation to experience what the disciples experienced and more. And I want to give you um, three things before we pray. Um, three things uh, what I feel like God wants to align in our life today. Are you ready? Number one, repentance. Repent. Align your heart. That is what we talked about from the beginning till now. About repenting, turning our hearts towards our Father. Number two, reset. Reset. What do I mean by that? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was void and dark and there was no order. But then the Father spoke, let there be light. Light be. And there was light. And he started to speak order into chaos. And he made this world beautiful. 
But then we messed up and all this stuff happened. And then Jesus on the cross, before he dies, the Bible says in Matthew 27, whole earth darkened for three hours. And what I felt is that time when the whole earth darkened, there was a reset happening. All things that passed, everything got restored. God himself pressed that reset button. Bam. And order was restored. Alignment was restored and available for you and me. And number three is relationship and honoring our fathers and mothers, our physical mothers and fathers, and our spiritual mothers and fathers. Repent. Where there is alignment, there is a flow, remember? There's a heavenly, divine flow in alignment. And when I talk about alignment, it's not something God forces us into. Alignment equals to love, his love, his passion and compassion. That is his alignment. That is the force which moves everything into alignment. The force behind alignment is love, passion, and compassion. God, God's, our Father's love, passion, and compassion. He desires us to come in alignment with Him. He's waiting for us, eagerly waiting for us. With His loving eyes on you and me, He's waiting for us to come home. So, are you ready? Say that with me. Number one, repentance. Father, I'm sorry for the wrong things I did in my life. And I choose to repent today. I choose to turn to you. And if you backslid, I choose to turn back to you, Father. And I choose to live a new life with you, Jesus, as my Savior and Lord. Amen. Number two, reset. Just as an act of faith, stretch your arm. If you want to have a reset. If you want to experience the reset of God for us. Just as a fate of action. Action fate. An act of faith. <laughs> stretch your arm. And let's say yes, Appa. Yes, Father. We say yes to that. And make a press movement. Yes. I say yes to that reset. I receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Now relationship. When did you talk to your mom or your dad last? Having a mom, a physical mom and dad, it's a heavenly picture of the divine family. God wants us to honor our moms and dads. So if you didn't talk to your mom or dad, or if you have anything against your mom or dad, or they have anything against you, forgive them, repent. Call them up today and say, hey mom, hey dad, I love you, forgive me. The same way our spiritual fathers and mothers. When did you last call them up and said, hey, thank you. Thank you for being here for us. We love you. I love you. Would you do that today? So go through these three points, repentance, reset, and relationship. Allow him to align you in these areas. Okay? Let's pray. <sighs> Again, just as an act of faith, can you stretch your arm and receive? Ready? Like this. You can hold both your hands like this.
Appa, I give everything what you imported into me to this person right now, to your son and your daughter right now in Jesus' name. I release everything what you gave me to them in Jesus' name. Fill them up, Holy Spirit. A fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' name. <sighs> alignment. I speak alignment over your body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, come into alignment to the spirit in the name of Jesus. If you are sick... I speak alignment to your body in the name of Jesus. Alignment. Every pain leave this body right now. If it's cancer, cancer, we rebuke you. And we speak alignment in the name of Jesus. Everything come to the order. How our Father in heaven created this body to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Appa. <sighs> Receive. Holy Spirit, teach us. Show us. Help us to love, to be passionate, and to have compassion. And we ask for more. We do ask for more. We want more of you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed this prayer, please contact us. We would love to talk to you. We would love to answer any questions you have. And we would love to just help you to encounter his presence more and more and more. Let's come together with one accord to seek his face. Come on. So right after this, we are, um, we are going to have our Zoom get together. So feel free to join in and we are going to talk about what we just talked and just to hang around together. So bless you, bless you, bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you wondering what it means to be a follower of Jesus? We would love to explore that question.